Hello students, in this video, I want to help guide you through your five paragraph essay on the necklace. By now, you have already thoroughly read the necklace, analyzed the characters and conflicts in the story, and you have chosen your text evidence about characters. Now you are ready to write. Step one, you need to choose a theme. We have already gone over four different themes in class. We've discussed them. We've talked about why they are themes in the story. And I believe you even found text evidence that matches with this theme. For the purpose of the essay, I've given you three themes to choose from, and you need to choose the one that you feel most connects to the story, as well as one that you would like to write about. I'm going to give you a moment to read through the three themes and choose one. Okay, step two, choose a character. Now you can choose either Mrs. Loisel or both Mr. and Mrs. Loisel. If you choose Mrs. Loisel, you're going to be doing two paragraphs on her. If you choose Mr. and Mrs., you can do one paragraph on Mrs. Loisel and another paragraph on Mr. Loisel or two paragraphs about both of them combined. Here are Madame Loisel's personality traits. Now we've gone over this in class. We've talked about how she exhibits these different traits, why she acts this way, and you've even taken these notes in your notebook. But I'm putting a large list here so that you have it all in one place. I'm going to give you a moment to look at this list and jot down maybe four or five different characteristics that you think you would like to use in your essay. All right, here are Mr. Loisel's personality traits. We've also talked about this and how he exhibits these traits when acting in the story and when acting towards Mrs. Loisel. I'm also going to give you a couple of minutes to think about some words that you would like to use when discussing the story and what's going on between these two characters. All right, step three, choose a conflict to focus on. You need to choose one of the conflicts that are present in the story and analyze that conflict and how it proves the theme in the story. We've talked about this as well. We've gone through all the different types of conflicts that occur in literature and then specifically the conflicts that are occurring in the necklace. If you need a refresher, I put it down below over here. Now we have man versus man, human versus human really, because you have a conflict with Madame Loisel and Mr. Loisel. We have man versus self, man versus society, and man versus fate. Now for paragraph number three, you should focus on one of the conflicts within the necklace and prove, use it to prove your theme, okay? So don't get bogged down with talking about every single conflict. No, you just need to analyze deeply one of the conflicts. All right, here's your essay outline. You've already done this. You have this worksheet with you. This worksheet's also on Google Classroom. This is actually the guide before writing your essay. Now it discusses everything I've already said. Step one, choose a theme that you will prove in your essay. Here are the three different themes. Step two, choose a character to analyze. This will be two meal paragraphs about this character and their characterization. Mr. Loisel and Mrs. Loisel, or just Mrs. Loisel by herself. Then you have your essay prompt. How does the author, Guy de Maupassant, develop the theme of, and you need to write what theme you have chosen to write about. This is specific to what your choice is. Through the characterization, now characterization of who, that is specific to who you are choosing, and conflict. All right, write your complete prompt question, with your chosen parts. Now I'm giving you an example. My example for your prompt question is, how does the author Guy de Maupassant develop the theme of 
things do not bring happiness, value the people around you and your genuine relationships through characterization and conflict. Okay, so let me go back. I chose theme number three, things do not bring happiness, value the people around you and your genuine relationships. During my process of writing my essay, I'm going to want to keep going back to my prompt and my thesis so that I know that in the meal paragraphs, I am proving that things do not bring happiness, value the people around you and your genuine relationships. You do not have to pick theme number three. I'm just giving you an example, okay? The other themes are perfectly acceptable. Theme number one is great. Greed, pride, and love of materialism can lead to a life of loneliness and great misery. We saw at the very end, she became lonely, she was miserable. That's a great theme. Theme two is also a great theme. All right. After you write your complete prompt question, you need to choose your character. Now, say I'm going to choose just Madame Loiselle. Then I will take time to write four character traits that I want to use to prove my theme. You've already seen all the character traits. I think you've done this part and have the text evidence, so you're already ahead of the game. But anyway, for the purpose of this video and training, you would pick four different character traits. Then, on a separate sheet of paper, write four quotes for evidence of the character traits that you provided. So if you're picking materialistic, you want to find text evidence that proves Madame Loiselle is materialistic. If you are saying Madame Loiselle is too prideful, you want to find another text evidence that proves she is prideful. This will help you in your essay. And number three, conflict. And again, on a separate sheet of paper, write three quotes for evidence of the literary element of conflict that helps you prove the theme. So you need to pick the type of conflict you want to do talk about man versus man, man versus self, man versus society, and find quotes that help prove the conflict. Now, these are on separate sheets of paper because it is like your rough draft. Once you start writing your full essay, you will go back to those papers where you have your quotes and use it into your full essay. All right, this is the large macro view, if you would like, of your essay outline. I'm going to go over everything you're going to need in your essay, and then I'm going to go deeper into what exactly is in paragraph one, what exactly is in paragraph two, what exactly is in paragraph three, and so on. But if you want to stop here, take a photo of this, that would be a good idea to help you follow how you're going to write this essay. So your essay outline is going to include paragraph one. It is an introduction of characters, your thesis, and background information of the story. Remember, you're writing this essay with the idea that the reader, that me, your teacher, has not read this story before. So you want to provide clear background information. Paragraph two, characterization number one of your chosen character. This is going to be an extended meal paragraph. So extended meal, M-E-A-E-A-L. Again, main idea, evidence, analysis, another piece of evidence, analysis for that evidence, and your last sentence, okay? So you're going to describe the characterization, the character traits of your character. Always think, how can I prove my thesis from this paragraph? How can using prideful and ungrateful prove my thesis? All right. Characterization number one can be two different character traits because you have two pieces of evidence. Paragraph three, characterization number two. It can also be two pieces of evidence, two different character traits because you have two pieces of evidence. Characterization of chosen character, extended meal paragraph, to evidence, to analysis. And you want to think, how can this characterization of maybe Matilda being 
um, delusional and dissatisfied prove my thesis. Okay. Again, you want to set this up for always proving your theme and your thesis. Paragraph four is not an extended meal paragraph. It's a regular meal paragraph. So one piece of evidence, one analysis, and it's about conflict. So you're going to explain and give evidence of conflict to prove the theme. And then paragraph five is your conclusion. Your conclusion wraps up the whole essay. It gives an a, a summary of the entire essay. It can give a different idea, enduring idea, a different message, a different moral code. You kind of just wrap everything up in your conclusion, okay? Make sure you are proving your thesis. So in these body paragraphs, you're talking about what your paragraph is about, like characterization, characterization, and then conflict but then how can you also prove your thesis? Now, this is the large essay outline. I'm now going to go on to some things that you need and then the deeper intricacies or nitty gritty of each paragraph. All right, you have this document in your writing folder. This is a very important document. This will help bring your writing a level up. This is obviously your sentence starters for your evidence. I need you to use a sentence starter. This are different transition words that will help you for analysis one. You have because, for instance, for example, the author stated. And on the bottom here, you have different sentence starters for proving your thesis or essential question. You see how important that is? Proving your thesis. So some of the sentence starter it, starters are, so this is important because this demonstrates that, this connects to, we can see that, this proves that. Go ahead and take this out of your writing folder and have this on your desk when you're writing your essay. This is going to be extremely important. If you don't have it, I'm going to add another a document into the Google Classroom so that you can also access, access it in that way. All right. Here is my guide. Follow the guide that I provide. This is the guide that is going to go deeper. Now, if you remember, we did this large outline. Now I'm going to go, what exactly do you need in paragraph one? What exactly do you need in paragraph two? So let's go do that. All right, this is paragraph one. This is your introduction paragraph. What do you need? Number one in the story the necklace let's not let's not joke we know what the title of the story is in the story the necklace by guy de maupassant then create your main idea you need a generic main idea sentence that helps us understand what we're going to read about this is not your thesis yet it's just a main idea sentence for example in the story the Necklace by Guy de Maupassant, we discover a couple who is not entirely satisfied with their life, okay? Simple to the point. You don't have to use exactly what I chose. Now, that was just something off of the top of my head. Go ahead and create your own. Number two, the most important part, thesis sentence. You will get this from the prompt question. You saw that prompt question that I went over in your essay outline. You're going to take that question and turn it into a statement. I don't need a question as a thesis. A thesis is a statement that you want to prove in the essay. So it is going to be, let's see if I can back up. It is going to be a, a mess, a mesh of, your theme and your characterization, all right? So something about the theme is going to be in your thesis. Something about the character is going to be in your thesis because you want to prove the author's theme. All right, number three, introduction of who the main characters are or the characters you will discuss. You don't have to discuss every single character in this story. You just need to discuss 
the characters that you are going to talk about, okay? Um, background information or a brief summary about what happened in the story. You need to provide background information so that I or the reader have some type of idea of what is going on. All right, take a moment and look at this. Okay, extended meal paragraph one. This is going to be characterization of a chosen character. Number one, main idea sentence about the topic of this paragraph. So it's going to be characteristic of the character or a couple characteristics of the character, all right? So you need your main idea sentence of this paragraph. You need your sentence starter that I have provided to introduce evidence one for the characteristic. So that's why your sentence starters are important. Then you're going after you give the evidence, the quote from the story, you're going to analyze the evidence. Your analysis needs to explain what is happening in the quote, why is it happening, and what is the character feeling. To remind you, please don't start your sentence, what is happening in the quote is, Madame Loiselle is getting a necklace. No, you just, state it. You can just say, Madame Loiselle is getting a necklace, right? Madame Loiselle is going to the ball. You don't need to say, what is happening in the quote is Madame Loiselle is going to the ball. No, just give me your statements. These are questions, okay? B, why is it happening? Why is she doing this, all right? Again, don't say, it is happening because. No, just tell me why it's happening. And then C, what is the character feeling? So this is a little bit of analysis of what is the character feeling. Number four, explain why this quote is important. Explain what, what the quote reveals about the character. Explain why the quote proves your main idea sentence. This is analysis too, all right? So in your document of sentence starters, go to the sentence starters that help you analyze the quote from analysis two. If I can go back, it's over here. This is important because this demonstrates that, all of those things, all right? Number five, explain how the quote proves the thesis. This is the most important part. The thesis. Go back, read the thesis that you have created that includes characterization and your theme and explain how the paragraph characterization, what the character is doing, how does it prove your thesis, all right? Then you're gonna have another sentence starter, introduce evidence number two for your characteristic, same analysis of that piece of evidence, don't get cheap on me, give me a deep analysis of that piece of evidence the same way you did for the first piece of evidence, same thing for analysis two, explain why the quote is important, how, it reveal, how the quote reveals the character, how it proves the main idea sentence, and then again, give me a sentence about how it proves the thesis, how it proves your theme. And then last sentence. Some of you have difficulty with the last sentence, but the last sentence just summarizes the entire paragraph. That's why we call it link. It links back to your main idea sentence of what the topic of this paragraph is. All right, again, this is an extended meal paragraph, so two pieces of evidence, two pieces of analysis, and it's about characterization of your character. Extended meal paragraph two, this is going to be the exact same thing that I said for meal paragraph one, meal paragraph two, because this is also characterization of a chosen character. But you need to have another idea. You need to have another character trait for this person. So M for meal, is main idea sentence, the topic of this paragraph, another characteristic of the character. So you need to think of a different sort of topic for this character trait, okay? And then it's the same thing. Sentence starter, different piece of evidence, analyze it, why is it important? How does it prove your thesis? Sentence starter, evidence too for a different characteristic, how does it prove your thesis? 
Or if you have a very large characteristic, if you just have one characteristic, then you can prove one characteristic, like maybe prideful or materialistic, but give me different pieces of evidence, okay? Different pieces of evidence, different analysis, and then how does it prove your thesis? Link, link up to this main idea, this topic of this paragraph, and close it out, okay? So you want to create this kind of arc of how is Madame Loiseau, so in, I mean, in meal paragraph one, how does she act? What is happening to her? And then how does she progress in the story? And how does this prove the thesis, right? Like, so first, maybe she's very dissatisfied. And then she is satisfied because she gets the necklace. And then what happens? She becomes too greedy. I don't know. Show me the arc of what the character goes through, right? The progression of what she goes through that proves your theme, right? Like that proves you need to value the people around you because you'll end up miserable or that, I don't know, that you need to appreciate the things you have. I don't know. You need to go back to the themes and make sure you know what theme you are proving. All right, meal paragraph three. Now, this is just a regular meal paragraph. It is not an extended meal paragraph. This is about conflict that proves your thesis. Okay, so it says choose one type of conflict in the story. It could be man versus man, man versus self, man versus society. These really all have to do with Madame Loiselle. So if it's man versus self, it's Madame Loiselle versus herself, okay? It's Madame Loiselle versus society. Man versus man, it could be Madame Loiselle versus Mr. Loiselle, all right? So explain one conflict and how it proves your thesis. Again, back to the thesis, back to the theme. So main idea sentence of the topic of this paragraph, which is going to be conflict. So you're going to have to think about what you really want this paragraph to say. A sentence starter, evidence number one for the conflict, same type of analysis, what is happening in the quote, why is it happening? What is the character feeling? Same type of analysis too. Why is this quote important? What does it reveal? And again, prove your thesis. How does this conflict prove your thesis? Okay, how does it prove the theme? Really, the thesis is your theme. And then your last sentence, summarize the entire paragraph. How does it link to your main idea? Okay, this one, only one piece of evidence. All right, and then in your conclusion, your conclusion needs to answer the prompt in a short summary. Make sure you prove your thesis. I don't know how many times I've said that, so I hope it is clear. It is about proving your thesis, proving the theme of the story that the author provided. Number two, summarize the main idea of the entire essay. Number three, give a little final message or a lesson that we can learn from this story because we can learn a lesson from this story. That's what the theme is. Just state that again. Now, lastly, conclusion should not be only one or two sentences. Conclusion needs to be five or six sentences. Give me a good closure to a good essay. All right, so don't get cheap on me. Continue on in having a good conclusion. All right, before you're done, when you're finished writing all five paragraphs, reread your entire essay. Does it make sense? Are there parts that you have to change? Did you correct the spelling errors? Please try not to give me major spelling errors. Is the grammar and capitalization correct? Did you capitalize all the names? Did you capitalize places like Paris or France? Because that is the setting, okay? You want to give me some background information on the setting. Number five, did you answer all of the analysis questions? Don't get cheap. Give me all the analysis questions answered so I can have a deep understanding of your essay. Number six, did you add transition words? Number seven, do you have a short and clear sentence or are you, your sentences long and rambling? No, I don't want a short paragraph. I just want short and clear sentences, all right? Short and clear sentences. All right, let's see what else we have. Remember to keep going back and reading what your thesis is so that you can prove it within your essay, all right? You create your thesis from the prompt question 
with a theme, all right? So your thesis really is about your theme and the characters that you are choosing. I hope that is clear now. And then within your essay, you are kind of outlining the way that Madame Loiselle went from the beginning to the middle to the end, and how does this prove the whole theme? All right. Oh, one other thing. Your essay cannot have the word I in it. I don't want to see the word I or the word ETC, et cetera. No, if you have to say et cetera, then explain what your et cetera means. You need to be very clear. And please don't have, in this essay, I will show how Madame Loiselle became miserable. No, but you don't need to have I. You're writing it. I know it's your opinion. Okay, so don't have I in your essay. All right, I think that's it. Now it's time to get essay writing. Good luck, guys. I know you're going to do a great job.